One of the important organelles we have to talk about in photosynthesis is the chloroplast, obviously, because the function of this particular organelle is to carry out photosynthesis. Duh. So let's talk about the structure of the chloroplast. Remember in chapter 1A levels, we said that the chloroplast was a double membrane organelle where it has its own outer membrane and inner membrane. Within the chloroplast, they also have their own internal membranes, all right, uh, which I'm drawing out, and those structures are referred to as granume. I will be explaining the granume further in detail later. Very importantly to remember also is the chloroplast, they have their own 70S ribosomes and circular DNA. We have talked about this in chapter 1 of A levels. And also the space within the chloroplast, which I've highlighted in blue, that is called the stroma. Not stoma, stroma. So you have to be a bit careful over there as well. A lot of my students do make that mistake. Stoma are the opening in the leaf where it allows gas exchange and transpiration to happen. But the stroma is the space, the liquid-filled space inside the chloroplast where the granume, ribosomes and circular DNA are floating around. Now, what we first have to understand is the granule is the site of light-dependent reaction where they have to absorb light and they have to produce ATP, they have to produce the reduced hydrogen carriers, and they also have to produce oxygen through the photolysis of water. All right? And the stroma is the site of light-independent reaction. What happens during light independent reaction? That's where the formation of carbon, carbon and carbon hydrogen bonds happen so that organic molecules such as glucose can be synthesized. So we talked about that in the previous video. And if you can see those orange color sections that I'm highlighting there, like uh, those sections are referred to as the starch granule. Yes, the chloroplast has a very important function. They carry out photosynthesis, but they also store starch within themselves. So it's also good to familiarize, to familiarize yourself with the presence of the starch granule. Now, I want us to focus on the granule. The granule here looks like a stack of coins, doesn't it? All right. So what exactly the granule is, is that it is a stack of something known as thylakoid. You can imagine the thylakoid to be like a single coin. And when you join the thylakoids together, they become something known as granule. The thylakoid is the important thing that we have to see because individually, the thylakoid itself has its own phospholipid bilayer forming something known as the thylakoid membrane. And here's where it becomes very interesting. Embedded in the thylakoid membrane, they have a particular enzyme. And that enzyme looks familiar if you've done chapter 12. What does that enzyme look like, by the way? That enzyme is actually the ATP synthase. Yes, the thylakoid has its own ATP synthase. And by the way, what's the function of ATP synthase? It's supposed to make ATP. So, the chloroplast has granule, the granule has thylakoids, and the thylakoid has its own ATP synthase to synthesize ATP. All right? But this is not through respiration, by the way. Within the thylakoid membranes also, it has its own electron transport chain, just like the ones in the mitochondria. So this is where it's quite interesting. So you're like, oh, does the chloroplast carry out respiration? No, it does not. Okay, so we will talk about that later as well. And in between the electron transport chains, there are things known as photosystems. I'll explain that in a while. Okay, and the photosystems are divided into two types, photosystem two on the left and photosystem one on the right. Now, some students will ask me the question, why is photosystem two on the left and one on the right? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Um, if I'm not mistaken, the reason is because photosystem one was discovered first. Okay, and then after some time later, scientists then discovered photosystem too. That is why they are named as such. It's a bit confusing and a bit, and a bit annoying, I might add. But, you know, that's just the way biology is sometimes. And next to photosystem 1, there is also the presence of an enzyme. And I'll talk about the function of the enzyme in a while. Okay. So this is what we first have to understand about the thylakoid. The thylakoid is this weird structure within the chloroplast. When you take the thylakoids and form it into a stack, they form something called granule and they carry out the light-dependent reaction. However, each thylakoid individually can have its own ATP synthase 
can have its will have its own membrane called the thylakoid membrane. It has ATP synthesis, which you know is to produce ATP. It has an electron transport chain, which you know is to transfer electrons. Okay, we've covered that. It also has these things called photosystems. I'll talk about that in the next video. And also an enzyme, which we will also cover in the next video. So this is what we just have to be aware of when we are studying the structure of the chloroplast.